Hello and a very warm welcome. Uh, we are going to quickly go through um, some of the aspects of the stories within the New Testament and uh, specifically re really it's loaded more towards the Lucan Gospel um, and that of Titus Flavius. So I had a, a discussion with a few people on a thread yesterday um, regarding this and I know it's not a new theory and uh, the theory was put forward by a guy called Joseph Atwill um, and I have to say I subscribe to largely to his thesis it makes a lot of sense and you don't have to use Atwill's larger kind of big picture reasoning here all you need to do is look through um, the Gospels themselves principally Luke and uh, then Josephus's wars and you'll find these one for, for one parallels and you find them running chronologically in order which gives it such substantial uh, mathematical weight uh, we have to remember as well that the Gospels appear to be doing this in prefiguring uh, or sorry the Old Testament is prefiguring the Gospel literature and there are going to be lots of parallels again that run continuously and uh, concurrently through these texts and often do them in um, in sequential order so the thesis here is fairly strong if you've got one text that's so close to the other uh, and the Old Testament is of course found across the New Testament and in Paul's letters and so on if you've already got that there then it's not hard to see how um, the New Testament might well be prefiguring something sorry um it running a, a kind of broad parallel storyline with something else and Josephus is used to uh, help to bolster the some of the historical aspects of the New Testament and this is fairly well understood there are many proponents of this uh, and, it, and it becomes even stronger that claim when you see that the parallels um, in Titus's ministry run very nicely with um, Luke's gospel principally but also Matthew and John and you'll see this as we go now I want to quickly and I hope Joseph Atwell doesn't mind me doing this but he asked a chat uh, a AI um, language model to run the numbers for this and it's quite a basic um, he asked it some fairly basic questions as far as I can see he doesn't go into some of the stronger more granular details of these parallels but I thought I'd just read it for you guys it's a little bit long but I think it's worth doing this is going to be the first time I think I actually really talk about this directly um, it's been on my mind for a for year for I mean upwards of 10 years I bought the book I mean maybe 15 years ago and it, and it changed the way that I look at the New Testament so here we go, um, AI chats uh, thoughts on the Caesar's Messiah theory. Thank you for the follow up. This is the chat, G no, I don't know if it's chat GPT, but um, here we go. Thank you for the follow up question. I'll examine the role that sequence plays in indicating that the Moses Jesus typology was intentionally created in the gospel of Matthew. Then I'll assess whether the sequential, just sequential parallels between Jesus and Titus support the idea that the Jesus Titus typology was also intentionally crafted, thereby reinforcing the, the Flavian, height, uh, Flavian thesis. Now, Matthew's gospel is a very kind of Jewish um, Old Testament parallel kind of gospel so he's talking about the Old Testament relationship to the the um, canonical Matthew here just to be clear um, and we're going to see then how it also relates to Titus uh, pr principally in Luke but also in Matthew as well the sequential alignment of events between Moses' life in the Old Testament and Jesus's life in the Gospel of Matthew suggests deliberate structuring by the author. This intentional sequencing strengthens the argument that Matthew crafted his narrative to present Jesus as a new Moses, fulfilling Jesus' uh, Jewish expectations of a prophet like Moses, Deuteronomy 18.15. Uh, Jesus is called the new Moses and has been for uh, hundreds, I think, of years. Sequential parallels, descent into Egypt, Moses, um, Moses, Israel, uh, Jacob and his family descend into Egypt under Joseph's guidance, Genesis 45, 50. 
Jesus now. Joseph brings Jesus and Mary into Egypt to escape Herod, Matthew 2.13. Okay, the massacre of infants. Moses, Pharaoh, orders the killing of Hebrew male infants, Exodus 1. Uh, Jesus, Herod orders the massacre of male infants in Bethlehem, Matthew, Matthew 2.16. Return to Israel. Moses, uh, okay, Moses, God instructs Moses to return to Egypt as those who sought his life are dead. Exodus 4.19. Jesus, an angel tells Joseph to return to Israel as those who sought Jesus' life are dead. Matthew 2.20. Passing through water, Moses leads the Israelites through the Red Sea, uh, Exodus 14. Jesus undergoes baptism in the Jordan River, uh, Matthew 3.13. Wilderness temptations, Moses, Israelites, wander in the wilderness for 40 years facing various tests, 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 Exodus 16.17. Jesus spends 40 days... 40, 40. In the wilderness, tempting, tempted by Satan, Matthew 4, 1 to 11, giving of the law teachings. Moses descends Mount Sinai to receive the law. Uh, that's Exodus tw- uh, 19, 20. Jesus delivers the Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, providing new teachings. Matthew 5, 7, roll of sequences. So we'll just go through some of these sequences now. Intentional structuring. The author of Matthew appears to have arranged events in a specific order to mirror Moses' life. Theological messaging. By aligning Jesus' life sequentially with Moses, Matthew emphasizes that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Literary techniques. Sequential typology is a powerful literary device that reinforces connections between characters and narratives. Conclusion uh, on intentionality. The precise and ordered sequence of parallels between Moses and Jesus suggests deliberate creation. Um, Yes, the likelihood of these events aligning sequentially by chance is minimal, indicating that the author intentionally crafted the narrative to draw these connections. Part two, the sequence of, very quickly, um, Elijah and Elisha and Joshua also parallel Jesus, and again, fairly specifically. And also, you'll find that Joshua's paralleling is very specific. And again, I think it's pretty sequential as well. Uh, Long list of parallels. This is not just Moses. This happens in other places and it can even be seen in the Old Testament, principally just in the Old Testament. Um, The sequence of, um, okay, part two, the sequence of Jesus typology and its implications. Um, Background on the Jesus Titus typology. In Caesar's Messiah, Joseph Atwell proposes that the Gospels contain parallels between Jesus' ministry and the military campaign of Titus Flavius during the Jewish Roman War. 66 to 73 CE. The argument is that these parallels, especially when they follow a similar sequence, indicate that the Gospels were deliberately constructed to align Jesus with Titus. Um, And there are about 32 sequential parallels, and there are four other parallels that are not within the story, but they contain themes. John and Simon. One is in Josephus and... um, Luke, one is executed, one survives. Uh, the myth for the world, the idea that this this Mary uh, mother offers up her son, a little baby, as a lamb, uh, as a myth for the world. <laughs> it's crazy, dark. Um, but there, that's in his book. Um, sequential parallels between Jesus and Titus. Below is, a, constru- is a, a reconstruction of key events that are proposed to align sequentially between Jesus's ministry and Titus's campaign, along with analysis on whether the sequences, this sequence suggests intentional creation. Beginning in Gal- Galilee, um, Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee, preaching and performing miracles, Matthew 4, 12, 17. Titus, the Roman campaign, begins in Galilee, subjuing, subduing Jewish rebels. Um, and he goes, both of them go fishing for men on the Sea of Galilee. Both of them, catchers of men, specifically the word for catcher 
is the word that both of these guys use for fishing out men and killing men in the Sea of Galilee. But Jesus is, of course, just fishing for men. Okay. Um, encounters with demoniacs. Jesus encounters a man possessed by demons named Legion in the re region of the um Gezerim, Gezerim, yes. The demons enter swine that run into the sea. Mark 5, 1, 13. Titus battles in Gadara near Gezera. Rebels are forced into the Sea of Galilee, leading to mass drownings. Uh, three, prophecies of destruction. Jesus predicts the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, Matthew 24. Titus leads the siege that results in the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Um, four, journey to Jerusalem. Uh, travels to Jerusalem where he confronts authorities and is eventually crucified, Matthew 21-27. Titus advances towards Jerusalem, overcoming resistance and eventually capture, capturing the city, encirclement uh, of Jerusalem. Jesus, Luke 1943-44, uh, uh, predicts that enemies will build an embankment around Jerusalem that encircles it. Titus orders the construction of a siege wall to encircle Jerusalem, cutting off supplies, crucifixion, and salvation of one. Jesus crucified alongside, alongside two others. One is proposed uh, one is promised salvation, Luke 23, 32, 43. Titus Josephus. Josephus pleads for three uh, acquaintances on crosses. One survives. Now, Josephus Barmatheus, uh, Josephus of Arimathea, Barmatheus, that's another component of the story. Arimathea has not been found as a place. Barmatheus is Josephus. And he did that. And he took down three guys. Okay, you get the point. Um, sequence alignment. The events are, in Jesus' ministry are argued to occur in the same order as Titus's military actions. Narrative flow. This alignment suggests that the gospel narratives may have been patterned after Titus's campaign. Complexity and specificity. The parallels are not only thematic, but also involve specific locations and events. Evaluation of intentionality, unlikely to be coincidental. Uh, the sequential nature of the parallels reduces the probability that they occurred by chance. Literary craftsmanship. These gospels may have been crafted to encode these parallels, indicating a sophisticated literary effort propose a purposeful messaging if intentional these parallels could serve to present titus as a messianic figure or to reframe the jewish war in a theological context remember josephus believed titus to be the messiah just saying um Yes, uh, comparison to Moses, Jesus typology, similar use of sequences. Both typologies rely on sequential evidence to draw parallels between figures, literary techniques, employing typology and midrashic methods. The authors create layered narratives, theological versus political motives. Moses, Jesus, uh, the motive is theological, establishing Jesus as the fulfillment of Jewish law. Jesus, Titus, the proposed motive is political, aiming to pacify Jewish uh, resistance and legitimize Roman rule. Uh, strengthening the Flavian thesis through sequence by demonstrating that the gospel authors use sequential typology in the Moses-Jesus parallels is becoming plausible. It becomes plausible that they could have employed a similar method to create the Jesus Titus typology, argument supporting intentional creation, established literary practice. Okay, um, shall I go? I mean, yes, so the use of sequential typology was an accepted literary technique in Jewish and early Christian writings. Cool. Where am I? <laughs> the author was capable of sophisticated narrative construction. We know the authors were sophisticated authors. Luke, Matthew um, were sophisticated authors. So people who wrote Acts, again, they were smart people who used Greek, specific Greek literary devices uh, to, their, to great effect. Um, and was so present uh, alongside Jesus' story with Chastity's campaign could serve to present Roman actions as fulfilling divine prophecy. I think we get what we're um, where we're going with this. So, 
yeah I mean the mirroring here we, we are, so I'm just going to kind of leave it there um, final thoughts the, the deliberate use of sequence in, typo in typology is a powerful literary tool that can convey deep connections between figures and events in the case of Moses Jesus typology the intentional sequencing is widely recognized and, accept and accepted as a purposeful theological strategy applying this understanding to the Jesus typus Typology provides a compelling argument within the Flavian thesis. It suggests that the gospel authors or those influencing them may have crafted narratives that, own, not, that not only fulfilled theological goals, but also served political purposes in the context of Roman rule. Okay, so then the thing is, I haven't actually covered the majority of these parallels. Um, this is a good primer, I think, for this evidence um, and we've already noticed that there are um, certain parallels anyway just broadly speaking Titus is the one that has that uh, commits that little apocalypse on the Jews he, he removes the Jews throws out Jews from Jerusalem um, has it's a bloodbath this siege terrible things happen there's a story from josephus in which this this woman called mary eats her own child um this passover lamb that this that this be a passover lamb i think she says that in the in the in the script um the parallels are quite phenomenal um yeah and it's a trick that psycho high functioning psychopaths like the the um, Flavians, and I'm not saying they were strictly psychopaths, but they were fairly dastardly if they needed to be. Um, this might be a political game they're playing to try and pacify uh, peoples who were uh, xenophobic, very much kept to themselves. Um, Hellenized Jews were part of Titus's uh, inner circle. He had a concubine in um, Domitilla, I think, who was, oh no, Berenice, Berenike, who was the daughter of Agrippa, I think the second. The connections here are quite palpable. Um, and if anyone wants to find out more, you can, there are a couple of documentaries, extremely good documentaries, years old now, well, one of them is, um, Caesar's Messiah. Uh, it was turned into a documentary. It's on YouTube. Um, Joseph Atwell, Caesar's Messiah, about one and a half hours. It goes through, I mean, the, the more granular uh, points of these, these parallels. And also Creating Christ by James Valiant and uh, last name Fahey. Sorry, Robert Fahey. Um, great works, honestly, and quite compelling. Uh, they've had their criticisms over time. Uh, and I think some of those criticisms have been valuable, but they do not in any way um, throw out this thesis because they're right there in in old texts and as primary sources. I think Joseph's work has just helped to really organise this and um, help to just bring this to the attention of people. Now, this is still not a mainstream viewpoint by any stretch but I really think it, it should be um, analyzed properly and given the respect it needs so I'm going to leave that there I'm, I'm when we remember I think Joseph has said himself we cannot prove conclusively that this happened the way it did but what we can do is say the coincidences are so phenomenal um, that the probability that they are true here that there is a connection between these texts and that Jesus's story represents a construction in the second century no less you can't find it in the first and I, at first I think I've already helped to build a uh, somewhat of a picture of that and I, I'm going to continue to do that that with this channel um, yes and remember all I'm trying to do is show that there is a story behind the story of a a, a very useful tool in the words of Jesus in the early text, the, the Gospel of Thomas, for example, which shows you the the power of that word 
in our lives, the ineffable, the Tao, that has a kind of consciousness that will enter people who pay attention and give you gnosis. Anyway, peace out. Uh, that's it for today. I um, will be back tomorrow.